الر تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله this is uh, going to be the last session and um, this, is what, this will also be the conclusion إن شاء الله we'll try to finish I'll try to go we won't finish the whole surah because the last the the source the story of Yusuf itself ends before um, at um, before the, the the end because the end is the, the conclusion that wraps everything up in terms of uh, you know all the the beginning and the introduction they wrap everything up and that's that that will take time for us also to um, to elaborate but this is a one day so we don't have enough time to cover that inshallah actually what I normally when I teach the story so so Yusuf the minimum is two weekends, actually. So we're going, well, there's so much more benefits. I, the hardest part today for me, you know what the hardest part for me today? It's not teaching it. It's not what to teach, it's what to teach, what, what to not teach. Like there's so many things like, I want to tell you guys, but I don't have time. Let me get, to, let me, let, let's try to finish. And there's so many benefits. It's, it's difficult for me to actually teach. That's the most difficult part of today. Because I want, I, it's one of the things I, I love to do is to teach uh, like tafsir of the Qur'an, and of course there's no better story than the story of Prophet Yusuf salam. So you have all of this that you want to give and you can't do so because we don't have the time. So inshallah, let's continue again, let's finish up. Um, we're, we're towards the end inshallah. So Prophet Yusuf um, salam, is, in, is in Egypt and the brothers are trying to convince their father to allow them to bring Binyamin because if they don't bring Binyamin to Egypt, they're not going to get their ration or any ration whatsoever. And now they have opened up their, the, their loads and they have found all that which was all which they gave to the to the Aziz. The Aziz, of course, is now who? The Aziz is Yusuf alayhi salam. He's the minister. The Aziz has returned everything that they have. And so they come to their father and they said, they say, that, look father, everything has been returned to us. And now we have an opportunity to go back and, and, and get our ration again. And so Prophet Yaqub, when he sees that, that his children, hey, you know what? Maybe this time they are truthful. They're not lying because there, there are clues. There are, you know... Um, they're, they're saying that they are truthful also. They're, it's not like the, the last time. And so he decides, he says, I will not send him with you unless until you give me a solemn promise from Allah. You will come back unless you guys are attacked, in other words, surrounded, and then attacked and destroyed. In other words, don't come back to me uh, don't, all of you have to come back to me unless you are attacked, in other words, unless you all die. That's the only way that you shouldn't return to me. So you have to promise me that you will bring him back. And so they promise their father to bring him back, to bring Benjamin back. So the father now gives advice and he says, O oh my children, قَالَ يَا بَنِيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِنْ بَابِ واحد. Do not enter from one door or one, one gate. Why? Why should they not enter from one gate? Remember, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about jealousy also. So how do you cure jealousy? In the Qur'an, you have a problem and the solution will always be there. You have jealousy. And so there's also, there's also, uh, you know, when someone, when, uh, when someone, is very handsome or someone you should say mashallah and so he's prophet yusuf or prophet yaqub is taking precautionary measures and he's telling his children don't enter from one door oh my children he loves his children 
You understand, have to understand. He still loves his children. All of his children. And he says, min But enter from different gates. Remember the old days? You have cities that were surrounded by gates. Okay? You have cities that were surrounded by gates. And so the people lived in the city and a lot of time the fields are outside. And so when you enter Egypt, enter from different doors. Why? Because he's taking precautionary measures. You have to understand who these men are. Who are these men? These men are children of Prophet Yaqub. They are extremely handsome. And so if they all enter, imagine they're foreigners. They're not from Egypt. They're speaking a different language, wearing different types of clothes and... My, oh my, are they handsome. <laughs> MashaAllah. Right? And so if they were to enter all together in one door, that would cause a lot of, it would, it would get a lot of attention. And he's afraid maybe someone will have ayin on them and be, you know, and some, some, something may happen. And then he says, so he tells them, enter from different doors. Wallahu am for that reason. And so he says, What's the proof that we know that, that, that this might be the reason? Well, afterwards he says, وَمَا أُغْنِي أَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ You know, it's not going to benefit you at all if from Allah by doing all of this. We, we put our trust in Allah, but what does putting your trust in Allah mean? Putting your trust in Allah means you do all that you can first. All that you humanly can, and then after that you put your trust in Allah. You don't say, okay, I put my trust in I want a child. I want a child, okay, I'm going to stay in the masjid, make dua, and then Allah will bring a stork over and drop her baby. No. That's not how it happens, right? The stork is not going to come and bring you a baby, no. If you want to get married, or if you want to get, you don't want to have a child, first of all, take the, take the measures to get married, okay? Alhamdulillah, after you get married, okay, then do what you need to do, okay? And then after that, are you going to have a child? Are you promised to have a child? No, but you have to do all that you can possibly do first. You can't just do nothing and expect, okay, oh, inshallah, the stork is coming. No. Take all the, do all that you can first. That, then you put your trust in Allah. Whether you, get, you have a baby or not, that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether He gives you a baby or not, but do all that you can first. And so Allah is telling us that Prophet Yaqub says, All of this that we're doing will not avail any in the sight of Allah. In al hukmu illa lillah, again, the authority the, is for Allah alone. Alayhi tawakkaltu, and I put my trust in Him. Wa alayhi fal yatawakkal al mutawakkilun, and that's how, I want, that's how someone who wants to put their trust in Allah should do. Anyone who puts their trust in Allah should do that. Do all that they can first. So, for example, you have a child. Right. Take precautionary measures. Don't put your child all over the internet and then, you know, like, oh, uh, okay, mashallah. Because there are people there who are going to see, like, they're going to be jealous. Or they not, 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 not they, and, and so that's why you don't want to. You take all the precautionary measures, but at the same time, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when they enter Egypt, the way that their father ordered them to enter Egypt, Yusuf takes his brother in. To the side, and he tells them, "Inni akhuka fala tabtais bima kanu yamalun." I am your brother, so do not. You mean see? There's a different interpretation of this particular verse, but do not worry when you see anything happening. Fala tabtais, and it can also mean that whatever they used to do before will not happen again. In other words, don't worry about it. Now you're safe. Because some of the scholars say, would, said when Yusuf was gone, now they were harming Binyamin also. So now he's safe with Yusuf. But at the same time, you know, Yusuf, by Yusuf keeping Binyamin, what is that going to cause? It's going to cause greater hardship upon who? Upon the father. Why is he doing this? Why is he doing it? Inshallah, we'll find out quickly, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا جَهَزَهُمْ بِجَهَازِهِمْ جَعَلَ السِّقَايَةَ فِي رَحْلِ أَخِيهِ But when Binyamin, when Binyamin knows that this is Yusuf, his, he knows that this is Yusuf, and Yusuf is telling him, whatever you see that's strange, you know, don't, don't overreact. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't overreact. Just, you know, just stay calm. 
And so, when they are about to go, remember the Prophet Yusuf treats them very kindly. He is very, he is very hospitable. So he lets them stay. And all the people who are coming, he's very hospitable to them. And everyone knows the kind of person that Prophet Yusuf was. And so, Prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, lets them stay in the palace also with them. And then when Prophet Yusuf sends them off with their loads, he puts the goblet of the king. And the goblet of the king, of course, is, going to make, is, is made out of very, you know, probably gold or valuable silver or you know, something that's very valuable. He puts the goblet that belongs to the king in the, the load that belongs to who? To Benjamin. Uh, to Benjamin, Benjamin. So he says, "Thumma adhana muadhin." So when they leave, now the the brothers have le- are going home with their camels and the loads on the camels. They're going home to Philistine, and on their way back home, Prophet Yusuf sends a caller to call out, "Ayyatuha al-iru inna kum lasariqun." Oh, people of the caravan, you guys are thieves. Okay, now if they really stole something. What would they have done when they hear that? Take off, right? But they haven't, they didn't take anything. They don't know what's going on. And so they say, he turn, They turn around and say, What is it that you have lost? We have lost the goblet of the king. وَلِمَنْ جَاءَ بِهِ حِمْلُ بَعِيرٍ وَأَنَا بِهِ زَعِيمٍ And whoever comes and brings, brings it back, then he will have another ration, and I am responsible for that. I'm, I have the authority to do so. And so what do they say? Now they are being accused of stealing. The brothers of Yusuf are being accused of stealing. They say, قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا جِئْنَا لِنُفْسِدَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا كُنَّا سَارِقِينَ قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ By Allah قَالُوا They say by Allah لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ You guys know that we have not come here to cause mischief in the land and you know that we're not thieves. Why? These are children of prophets. They are people of religion, right? People of honesty. You know that we're not that type of, those types of people. And then Prophet Yusuf is asking them now. He's telling, he's asking them, the whole situation, the whole town is watching, you have to understand, okay? Everybody hears about it. It's a big incident here that has happened. The king has lost his goblet and nobody else was in the palace except for these guys. So who else could have stolen? And so now they're asking, they're saying, no, we didn't steal. And so he says, قَالُوا فَمَا جَزَاؤُهُ إِن كُنْتُمْ كَاذِبِينَ Okay, let me tell, let me ask you guys. If you did steal something, then what's the punishment for it? What is the punishment? If indeed you were the people who stole. In other words, what are they asking? Okay, you guys are religious people, okay? You guys are the children of Ya'qub. Okay, you guys, you guys are who you guys, as you claim to be. Okay, in your sharia, in your ruling, in your religion, remember the, the people of Egypt are following a different religion. And the children of Yaqub are following a different religion. So now they are being asked, okay, in your religion, if someone were to steal, okay, we catch you stealing, what is the punishment? What is the punishment? This is a very smart, <laughs> smart point that he's making. What is the punishment? According to your ruling, forget about the king's ruling, forget about Egypt, the rule of Egypt, forget about the law in Egypt, the law in your land. What do you, how do you do it? So they say, and the rule, and he, Prophet Yusuf knows this, right? What is the ruling during that time? During that time, if a person, if a person was caught stealing, then the, the person who stole, when he's caught, he becomes a slave of the person who he took it from. That's the rule during the time of Prophet Yusuf. So who would be the one that took, still stole? So now if Benjamin is the one that took the goblet, what would happen to Benjamin? He would be a slave, he would have to stay in Egypt. He would now be the property of the king. Or the property of the government of Egypt. Now he's a slave. He has to stay. So they say, they say, they tell him, they, of course they tell 
uh, Prophet Yusuf, they قَالُوا فَمَا جَزَاءُهُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَأْ كَاذِبِينَ قَالُوا جَزَاءُهُ مَنْ وِجِدُ فِي رَحْلِهِ فَهُوَ جَزَاءُهُ If the, the punishment for a person who does that is if whoever we find the goblet with, then he, is, he becomes the jaza, he becomes a recompense. In other words, he becomes that slave. كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الظَّالِمِينَ And that's how we deal with, the, uh, with those who do wrong. And so, now... Prophet Yusuf is checking the load. He's checking and checking. Who does he check first? He doesn't check Benjamin. He checks all the other loads first. Why? Because if he, had, if he would have gone straight to Benjamin's load, what would happen? They were like, be suspicious, right? Well, how did you know it was there? <laughs> right, right away. You went straight to his load. That means he didn't take it, right? No, Prophet Yusuf goes to the other people's load. And finally he gets to Benjamin. Oh, the goblet is here. The goblet they find he ثُمَّ اسْتَخْرَجَهَا مِنْ وِعَاءِ أَخِيهِ He takes the goblet out. And it's in the load of Yusuf. And the brothers are stunned. Would Benjamin, Benjamin do something like that? This is out of character, right? They know that. It was, it's something that he wouldn't do. But at the same time, they have no doubt that they're wondering why is he doing this. But what is it that gives way? That, 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 that really says, you know, he, the brothers are believing that oh, he actually did it. Anybody know what is it? Now you take out the goblet from the load of, Yus- of Benjamin. If you were Benjamin, what would you do? What would you do? You would say, I didn't take it. Somebody put it there for me. Wouldn't you say that? I didn't take it. I don't know where, how that came there. Honestly, wallahi, 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 I didn't take it, right? When they take it out from Benjamin's load, what does he do? Why does he do that? When Prophet Yusuf told them, hey, you see something strange happening. Don't calm down, just, just, just be calm. Don't say anything. So now they're thinking, wow, huh, that's really strange, right? But now they're in trouble. Why are they in trouble? And you know what they say also? Prophet Yusuf is sitting there. And then the brothers, they speak to Yusuf now. Uh, they speak to Prophet Yusuf. They don't know it's Yusuf, of course. They say, Remember, Benjamin is from what side of the family? From the other side, from a different mother, right? Different mother. So you look, look what they're saying. They say, if he stole, you know what? His brother used to be a thief also. Ooh. <laughs> I'm telling you. If you were in this position of use, what would you do? Ooh. <laughs> what are they saying? They're saying, that's not our side of the family. That's their side of the family. Right there. They are thieves. Who is he calling a thief? Who are they calling a thief? Yusuf. Where's Yusuf? Oh, if you were there, what would you do? What would you do? Probably inside, you're like burning. Right? Oh, guys. Oh, you guys. Oh, you did so much already. But you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يُبْدِهَا لَهُمْ But he kept it in. He didn't want to say anything to them. He says to them though, he says, قَالَ أَنْتُمْ شَرٌّ مَكَانَ So don't say that. I know you guys are worse. He says, you guys are worse. How did you know? He's just saying that. It's like sort of like almost cryptic, right? Like you guys are worse. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا تَصِيبٍ Allah knows what you're talking about. But he feels like he wants to just let him know. Right now, okay, remember the beginning I told you guys? Why didn't Yusuf go from the very beginning to take his father here. Why does all this have to happen? Why does all, all this have to happen? Now Benjamin is going to be here also. Benjamin is going to be here and it's going to cause more uh, worries, worries and anxiety for who? For his father. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ كِدْنَا Yusuf." This is how we planned it for Yusuf. Remember, Yusuf can't go because he's sent to whom? He's a messenger. Messengers are sent to a people. He's sent to the people of Egypt. 
And messengers, prophets and messengers can't leave the people whom they are sent to except by permission of Allah. They can't leave except by permission of Allah. So he's not allowed to go to Philistine except by permission of Allah. Remember a prophet? Do you know of a prophet who left his people? And what happened to him? Yunus, what happened to him? He was swallowed by a whale. And when the Messenger of Allah went to leave Mecca, he had to wait for permission from Allah. And so he has to wait because Allah is planning all of this. Allah did not give permission for Yusuf to go. So he can't go. He has to take care of Yusuf, the, 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 the affairs in Egypt first. Allah is planning all of this. And so this is not Yusuf. Allah wants this because Allah wants to raise the status of Prophet Yaqub. Remember, because relief is coming, but before that relief comes, Allah wants to raise his status by increasing his patience, making him stronger. That's why sometimes, sometimes we, we think we can't handle something. And then Allah doesn't give us any option except to be stronger, to be more patient. And it's the only way we can be stronger, is when Allah gives us no option except to be stronger then we have to be stronger, then we become stronger. We say, then after you finish all of it, Alhamdulillah, all that happened, and then you will be rewarded in this life and the hereafter, and you'll see, Alhamdulillah, all of that happened to me. I learned so much, and I'm so much stronger, so much better. So anything that happens to you, Allah is in control, and He knows what you're going through. Be patient, and continue to be strong. For indeed, when something happens, now Prophet Yusuf is going to lose, Prophet Yaqub is going to lose his son, and he's going to lose another son also. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, tells us right now, the brothers want to bring Benjamin back. They are in trouble. But what did they promise? They swore by Allah what they, what they would do what? They would return Benjamin. Are they able to return Benjamin? Is it by choice? No. Remember at the beginning, they wanted to take Yusuf away from their father. And now they are put in position where they are crying to bring Yusuf, or bring Benjamin, bring Benjamin back to their father. How ironic. They're crying. They're begging to bring their father's loved one back before they took it away, took it, Yusuf away. Now they want to bring Benjamin back and they can't do it. And so they say they're begging, begging to bring Benjamin back. You see how things turn? <laughs> it's a part of the beauty of the story of Prophet Yusuf. <laughs> and there's so much more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qalu ya ayyuhal aziz. So then, the brothers say, Oh Aziz. Now see, notice he says Al Aziz. Who is Al Aziz? This verse is an indication that he took the position of his master, that master that passed away. He has become that person. Because people are calling him Al Aziz. Ya ayyuh Al Aziz. Inna lahu aban shaykhan kabira. Oh, 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 noble one. Aziz, Al Aziz. Oh, minister. Indeed, he has a father who is elderly. Take us instead. Subhan, now they're willing to, all of them are willing to sacrifice themselves to please their father instead. Before they took a person, now they, they take me instead. Take me away from, her. take me instead and let, let Benjamin go. But then Yusuf, Inna naraka min al Oh, Noble one, oh Aziz, we see that you are amongst those who do good. No, I mean, have mercy on us. And so, what does, what does he say? He says, Allah, Billah, Billah. How can I take someone except that the one whom we found the item with? Notice he didn't say, except that we found him. Uh, I can't take anyone except for the thief. Did he call him a thief? He didn't. Look, he used his words carefully. He said, how can we take anyone else except for the one whom we found the item with? If we did such a thing, we surely would be doing something wrong. So they tried to convince the Aziz to take one of them, any one of them instead of Benjamin. 
Now remember, this, is, this whole incident is happening in front of all the people. And now they go aside and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيَّا Remember they got together to, to, to plot against Yusuf. Now they're getting together also to plan on what to do. And plan on what to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, قَالَ كَبِيرُهُمْ The eldest one says, what does the eldest one say? Remember at the beginning, Allah says, He says, He says, one of, he, he doesn't say the eldest, He says, one of them says. He doesn't specify who. Why? Because in that incident, they were planning to do bad. And so when someone plans to do bad, when somebody does a wrong, you don't expose them if you don't have to. You understand? So when somebody does wrong, that's why the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he would see someone do wrong and he's trying to correct the wrong, he would say, why are there some people doing this and that? He would never mention by name. But if they did good, Uthman ibn Affan would never be harmed after today, after what he spent. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned by name. So when you mention something good, mention by name, but when you mention something, don't expose people. Don't point fingers and put them in a situation where they feel uncomfortable. Just remind them in the best way without exposing them. So Allah is teaching us, and He says, the eldest one says, because He's doing good now, they're, cons they're not conspiring anymore, before they conspired, right? Now they're getting together to discuss this matter. And He says, the eldest one says, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ أَبَاكُمْ قَدْ أَخَذَ عَلَيْكُمْ مَوْثِقًا أَنَّ أَبَاكُمْ قَدْ أَخَذَ عَلَيْكُمْ مَوْثِقًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنْ قَبْلِ And now He says, Remember when we promised our father? You know that what we promised our father. And also before, مِنْ قَبْلْ مَا فَرَّطْتُمْ فِي يُوسُفِ Remember what we did to Yusuf? Now they're regretful. But now the, 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 the eldest feels a sense of responsibility. That he is the eldest. He should have stopped all this from the very beginning. So what does he say? فَلَنْ أَبْرَحَ الْأَرْضِ I will not leave this land. In other words, I'm going to stay in Egypt. Self-exile. And I'm not going to go back. I cannot go back. I promise. We, I pro remember, we promised to bring Benjamin back. But you know, I can't go back after promising our father this, except, unless my father calls for me. Of course, see, they're very obedient that they're their father. You know, if the father calls, it's mandatory to come now. But if my father doesn't call, you know what? I'm staying here. You know how hard that is? He himself is willing to leave his family. You have to understand, he has a family, he has children also. You know that. Now he's like, you know what? He's willing to leave his family. Sacrifice that for, they're, they're, he's willing to, for his father. Look at the position that they're in, like totally opposites now before. They, what the, all the harm that they caused now, they want to, they, they're, they're put in a situation where they, wanna, they want to sacrifice their own selves now. Or Allah decrease in this affair. In other words, or for some reason, some way, we can bring ben, I can bring Benjamin back with me. I'm not going to, I'm going to stay here. وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Then he tells him, he says, go back to your father. Go back to our father and tell him that, that, our, our, that your child stole. I mean, that Benjamin stole. And وَمَا شَهِدْنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلِمْنَا And tell him that we only, well, that maybe, maybe Benjamin, Yaqub, Prophet Yaqub is going to ask him, right? Ask him, well, how did this happen? He says, well, this is what happened. And we told them about the rules. And they'll say, ma illa ma alimna. And so when we were asked, we only gave the ruling that we knew. We asked us about our ruling in our deen, in our religion. This is the rule. During our time. So that's, we only gave what we knew. We didn't know this, all this was going to happen. We did not know that all of this was going to happen. And so the father comes back, so now that, that's what they do when they come back to the hell, the father. And they are trying the, to convince their father. And who's, who is gone? Who, does the fa who has the father lost? How many people now? How many people have returned? How many? No, not ten. Nine. Yusuf, there are twelve, right? But Yusuf is in Egypt. Benjamin is in Egypt. Who else is in Egypt? The eldest, right? Yes, Reuben, of course, that's in the, in the, in the, in the Bible. It's Reuben. But, um, of course, remember all these names? The reason why I don't mention all, some, all, all of these names, it's, it's just, these are things that we get from the people of the book. If you want to mention them, you can mention them. We do not deny them, nor do we accept it. Okay? And so, 
these were the three people whom Prophet Yaqub loved the most. So you thought it was hard enough to lose Yusuf. It's even harder to lose Bin. It's also hard to lose. You thought that that was enough, that he couldn't, you know, that was it. Remember how many years? This is many years later. Almost 40 years now. We're talking about 40 years separated. And now they have come back to their father. And their father, of course, doesn't believe them. They say, If you don't believe us, ask the, the, the town. Ask the town that we were in. The people, everyone witnessed it. Everyone was around. Can he go and ask the town? He's too old to travel. He's too old to travel back and forth. And for no reason just to ask. No, he can't. He's too old. It's too difficult for him. If you can't, then ask the caravan that came with us. Because there were people who also joined them on their trip to Egypt. So ask those people also. We are telling you the truth. What did they say? Surely we are telling you the truth. What did they say the first time? <laughs> Even if we were truthful, you would not believe us. And now what are they saying? We are telling you the truth. We are telling you the truth. Things have changed. But Prophet Yaqub suffers even more. He says, قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا Now this is something that you have concocted. He doesn't believe them. He said, you guys have done it again. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ As for me, I'm just going to be patient. عَصَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا I can only hope that Allah will bring them all back to me. And that's, I don't know how they're all going to come back to me, but I can only hope that they will. <laughs> all of this is happening. It's been a long time. He's missed Prophet Yusuf so much. But he still reminds himself also. He says, indeed, Allah is all-knowing and all-wise. All of these things that are happening to me, for all these years, I don't know why. But he's all, Allah is all knowing, all wise. Allah is all knowing and all wise. I'm going to be patient. And then he turns around, remember, وَتَوَلَّ عَنْهُ عَنْهُمْ وَقَالَ يَا أَسَفَ عَلَى يُسُفْ He again mentions Yusuf. And they say, are you going to continue to remember Yusuf until you, until you become feeble and weak? Or until you die. In other words, they're speaking to their father, the, to, to whom? The, the children are speaking to him, and the grandchildren and the family is saying, you know, Father, I think we should, you know, just look past this right now. It's been a long time. You've suffered a lot. Let's just move on. Can we just move on? Why are you still mentioning Yusuf? And so Prophet Yaqub then says, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I only address my sadness and concerns to Allah. وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And I know from Allah that which you do not know. He hasn't lost hope. Do you know why he hasn't lost hope? There's one thing that is giving him this hope. And he fully trusts Allah. What is it? The dream. He remembers a dream. But when is it going to happen? It's been so long. He's so old and feeble. It's almost the end of his lifetime. And it's still, he hasn't, he still misses Yusuf. And so he says, Oh, my children, go and look for Yusuf and his brother. And do not lose hope in the comforting mercy of Allah. Nobody loses hope in the comforting mercy of Allah except disbelievers. Now the drought has taken its toll. They have run out of food and they have no merchandise to trade for grain except for a few measly items. 
and they are coming to Egypt begging because they don't even have enough money to buy grains. And the family is starving. And there's no food. And so they come to Egypt and they say, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَزِيزِ Oh, Aziz, oh noble one, oh minister, your royal highness. Masana wa ahlana dhur. Our families are suffering. Wajitna bi ridahatin muzjah. And we have brought just measly items to trade in. And give us our full ration for these items. And even if they were to receive the full ration, it would not be enough. So they say, What the sadaq alayna? Give us in sadaqah. We're suffering. Our family's in need. We don't have enough to eat. Inna Allah yajzil mutasaddiqeen Surely Allah will reward those who give in charity. Look at the position they're in right now. And look at the position Yusuf is in. Those who hold on to the rope of Allah. Those who are honest. Those who are obedient to Allah. Those who are patient. Those who do good. Even if others don't see, the end result will always be for the believers. Those who do not do good, they will be in the other side of the spectrum in this life and the hereafter also. And so they're begging. And Yusuf looks at them. And Allah subhanahu wa says, قَالَ هَلْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ بِيُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ جَاهِلُونَ Do you remember what you guys did to Yusuf and his brother while you were ignorant? And so the brother's eyes are like, did he just mention Yusuf? Now this man here, who is this man? Who is this man in front of them? The Aziz, minister of Egypt. The Aziz. How does he know about Yusuf? We never told him the name Yusuf. How does he know about all of this? And then it just clicks. Everything's clicking in because they're saying, remember what you did to Yusuf and his brothers? You were doing that? And then everything clicks. And they say, Qala, qala, qalu, a'innaka la'anta Yusuf. They say, are you Yusuf? Are you Yusuf? Qala ana Yusuf. He says, yes, I am Yusuf. I am Yusuf. Wa hadha akhi. And there, Benjamin, that's my brother. You guys, that's my brother. God, what, you know what he did? Now he's in position. What does he do? Is he going to say, guys, you see what happened? No. What does he say? قَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا Surely Allah has been, Allah is ever kind to us. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ Now this is the lesson in the story. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ He who has taqwa and is patient, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah will never make the efforts of the muhsineen go to waste. And so then they say, remember, now they are, when they realize that he's Yusuf, and he's, he's mentioning that Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what Allah gives to those who are patient and have taqwa. Qalu Allah. They say, by Allah, the brothers are saying to Yusuf, in qalu tallahi laqad atharaka Allahu alayna وَإِن كُنَّا لَخَاطِئِينَ Surely Allah has favored you over us. Now what have, what, what's the significance of that? Remember Allah, Allah put the love of Yusuf in the heart of Prophet Ya'qub. That's a blessing from Allah. 
Yusuf had nothing, Yusuf himself could not control them. It is by Allah alone. So they realize that Allah has chosen you over us, so we have no right to be jealous. That we should, you, in other words, you shouldn't be jealous of anyone because whatever Allah has given to that other person, it is by the will of Allah. And when you're jealous, and you, well, as, as if you're saying, Ya Allah, you don't know I deserve it more than him. A'udhu billah. How could you say such a thing? Allah knows what you deserve and what he deserves. And maybe what he gets is a punishment for him. You don't know. So whatever Allah has given you, be pleased with it. And it says, if you're not, as if you're saying that, you know, Allah, you don't know him. He doesn't deserve that. I deserve that. A'udhu billah. How can you say such a thing? But when somebody's jealous, that's as if they're, it's as if they're saying that, right? You know, Allah knows you also. And Allah, knows, just be patient. Your time will come, but just be patient and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And have taqwa. And so they admit now, they admit, admit it and they say they have been in the wrong. But what does Prophet Yusuf do? There's no blame on you today. Yaghfir Allah lakum. May Allah, Allah has already forgiven you. Allah has forgiven you. Wahua arhamur rahimin. And surely He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Why does it, Allah, why, no, here, yaghfir Allah lakum. Allah has already forgiven you. Why? How does He know? How does Prophet Yusuf know? Anybody know? Why? Because, very good, mashallah, may Allah increase you. I should give you it's a lot of candy. That's really good. Honestly, yes, mashallah. Because Prophet Yusuf has forgiven him. Because when a person commits a sin, and then it's between him and another servant, of, uh, another servant of Allah, Allah does not forgive until the other person forgives. Right? And so Yusuf knows that he has forgiven them. So that's why he knows, if I've forgiven you, then I know Allah will forgive you also. Because I know I've forgiven you already. And so that's why he says, يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَهُوَ أَرْحَمَ الرَّحِمِينَ He's the most merciful of those who show mercy. Like he forgives them. After all of that, he forgave them. But there's a very important type of forgiveness here. The, the way that Yusuf forgave, he sincerely forgave. Because there are some people who forgive, but they don't really forgive. Honestly. They don't really forgive. That's another lesson, inshallah, we'll get to it in a minute. So he says, <laughs> Prophet Yusuf takes off his shirt and he says, take this shirt of mine. Now why does the shirt there? Why? Why? Remember the shirt comes again. And toss it in the face of my father and he'll be able to see again. Remember he had become blind because of his incessant crying, because of his supplication to Allah. Now, okay, <laughs> if someone's father were, is, is blind... Would you be, should you take your shirt off and throw it and put it on the face of your father? Would he be able to see again? Could you do that with a normal person? Then why did he do it? What's the, what's the thing here? Anybody know why? Anybody know why? A miracle, yes. Well, can I do that and hope for a miracle also? What is it? The smell of Yusuf? It is the smell of Yusuf, but well, I smell good too, inshallah. <laughs> What's, what's the difference? Let me tell you what the difference is, okay? The difference is Yusuf is a prophet and messenger. And you can take barakah from the remnants of prophets and messengers. Okay, so, so somebody who says, okay, I can do that too, or the sheikh or this imam, no, no, there's no barakah in you. <laughs> Not that type at least, okay? Prophets and messengers, the remnants of prophets and messengers are blessed. And there's barakah in it. So he's a prophet and messenger. And so that's why when you take off his shirt and put it on the face of Prophet Yaqub, because his brothers are not prophets and messengers, according to the, the stronger of the two opinions. Okay? So he's a prophet and messenger. So when, that's where the blessing is. The remnants of prophets and messengers are blessed. And he's, even though he's a prophet also, but then this is Yusuf now, of course. Uh, the, the shirt is what caused the beginning of sadness and blindness. Was what The shirt. When did he realize for sure that they were lying that his son was gone? The shirt. And now the shirt again is brought back. And so he says, toss this in and he would be able to see again. 
وَأْتُونِي بِأَهْلِكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ And bring all of your family to Egypt, all of them. Yes, brothers, we have made it big. <laughs> you understand? Come, guys, you know. He has forgiven them. وَلَمَّا فَصَلَتِ الْعِيرِ Now, where is Yaqub? He's in Palestine, in Canaan or in Palestine. The caravan is about to leave Egypt. Once it separates and it leaves the borders or the gates of Egypt, Allah says, قَالَ أَبُوهُمْ Prophet Yaqub is at home in Palestine. He's blind. And who is around him? The family. The family, right? The wives of his children, the wives of his children and the grandchildren are there. And so now, as soon, this is another miracle, as soon as the caravan leaves Egypt, Prophet, ya- Prophet Yaqub, who is hundreds and hundreds of miles away, right? He is hundreds and hundreds of miles away. He says, قَالَ أَبُوهُمْ إِنِّي لَأَجِدُ رِيحَ يُوسُفُ Man, this blind man, okay, he's old, and he goes, I smell the scent of Yusuf. What are you thinking? If you were to see something like that, what would you say? What would you say? There's something wrong, right? And then he says, you know, I smell Yusuf. Laula antu And I mean, he says, you know, I smell the scent of Yusuf. And I would say more than that if you otherwise. But I think if I do say more, you 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 think I'm senile, right? He's not senile, of course. But you're gonna think I'm senile if I say any more. What would he say? What's the thing that he wanted to really say? Also, I smell the scent of Yusuf. I think Yusuf is alive. He went to say Yusuf is alive, but if I added anything else, some of you guys are already saying I'm, there's something wrong with me already, right? Like some, you know, this is not normal. What they're seeing, of course, is a miracle. But when they see this, they say exactly what Prophet Yusuf, Prophet Yaqub thought that they were going to say. قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ إِنَّكَ لَفِي ضَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ Oh, by Allah, surely you are in your, still in your errant ways. What's his errant ways? You, all of this time, still love Yusuf more than everyone. Still in your errant ways. After all these years, how many years already? And you are still like this. It's, it's time to open the next chapter, Father. But he has hopes. And what he is smelling is true. It is Yusuf. And so, So the person, so now the group is coming back. But there's one person, the person who, the person, the brother who tried to, the brother who, who first initiated the plot he felt so bad that he wanted to be the one who brought the shirt back first. So he brought the shirt back and he went ahead of the caravan to give the good news and he tossed it in the face of his father and he's now able to see again. The miracle happens by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after the shirt is put on his face and his eyes he's able to see again. And he says... After everything, he said, oh, Yusuf is alive and everybody's alive and now this is what happened. Did I not tell you? Did I tell you that I know I know that which you did not know? What was it? The dream. He still had hopes because of the dream. And so now the brothers have all arrived in Palestine and they're seeking forgiveness for their father for all the wrong that they did. And they say, قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَ اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا Oh, our father, ask forgiveness for us. اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا خَاطِئِينَ Surely we were in the wrong. Remember what before they're always saying their father's in the wrong, right? Now they say, we were wrong, we were wrong all along. 
It was us. We were in the wrong all along. قَالَ سَوْفَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ رَبِّي But I want you now to learn also about how to be a good father. Listen to what this the Prophet Yaqub says. He says, I will, I will for, ask forgiveness for you. Whoa, wait. He says, I will. Okay, imagine, okay? The brother will say, ask forgiveness for us. And then the father says, okay, I will do it. I mean, not now, I'll do it later. But what are you thinking? What? Sawfa means not now, later, I'll do it. Later. What time? When? Like, does he still, is he still angry at them? No. Do you know why, he, you know why he's waiting to do it later? Because he loves them so much. He wants to wait until the last third of the night to ask Allah when Allah descends to the lower heavens. This shows the love of a father for their children. I want you guys, when you go home, to kiss your parents' forehead. Because no matter what you do, they love you. And they will always love you, no matter what happens. And that's the nature of a father. And if they passed away, then you ask forgiveness for them in your sujood. I want you to remember that. Look at the father. Yeah, I will. But he's looking for the best time because he, he loves his children even after all of that. <laughs> Surely he is all forgiving, most merciful. So now they're all coming to Egypt. But I want you to learn another lesson here. Look how, remember how Prophet Yaqub was? Look at the type of child and son Prophet Yusuf was. Allah says, and when they enter, when they came upon him, upon Yusuf, when they met Yusuf, Awa ilayhi abawai, he takes in his father, his parents. He takes upon he takes in his parents. And then he says, Qala dhulu Misra insha'Allah Amini. All of you enter Egypt. Udhulu al Misr, insha'Allah. Enter Egypt, all of you in peace. Now he why is he telling them to enter Egypt? Where is he at? Where is he? Is it in Egypt? Then why is he telling them into Egypt? They are, should they be inside Egypt already? Right? No, he's not in Egypt. You know where he is? He missed his father so much that he's waiting for his father outside the gates. And he wants to meet them. That's the type of son he was. When your father comes and your, parent, your mother comes into the house, don't wait for them to go to you. You go to them. You give salams and you kiss them on their forehead. Take them in. Tell them that you love them. That was how Yusuf was. That is an obedient child. A righteous child towards his parents. Towards his parents. And so, look, he says, because he's meeting them. He says, now enter Egypt, all of you. And they enter Egypt together. He's welcoming them. And then, And so then he puts his parents respectfully, of course, on the throne of Egypt now. His parents are on the throne of Egypt. But what? He shows respect for them. But now all the brothers... And his parents, they both go down in prostration to who? To Yusuf. And this was the interpretation of the dream. Why? Oh, you might say, well, can he prostrate like that? Is that halal? <laughs> of course it is during that time, that time. During that time, you can prostrate to show respect. And it wasn't shirk. Just like during the time of Adam salam, when the angels prostrated to Adam, when they prostrated, it was by order of Allah. So how can you call it shirk? 
<laughs> yeah, this is an order of Allah. And so that's why during that time, the Sharia of Prophet Yaqub and Prophet Yusuf and Prophet Ibrahim, if you show respect for someone, you're allowed to prostrate. But in our Sharia, it's not permissible. You can't prostrate to show respect. You can't prostrate to show respect. It's only for Allah. But during that time, it was permissible. And so Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam then says, وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِ هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلُ O oh, Father, this is the interpretation of my dream before. And Allah has surely made it true. And then I want you to listen to this because this is what forgiveness means. Okay? He says, listen to what he says. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي Indeed, Allah has been ever kind to me. إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ When he took me out of prison, وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِ and he brought you from the desert over here. In other words, we made it big. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one that gave us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind to me. When he took me out of prison. Why did he mention only this? Where was he before prison? Where was he? What was the last place that he was, that he suffered in? In the well. Why did he mention the well? He could have said, and surely Allah has been ever kind to me when he took me out of that well. <laughs> right? The brothers are there, right? But look at Yusuf. He has forgiven them. He does not want to hurt their feelings. When you forgive, you forget. Don't open old wounds again. That's why sometimes a, a, a husband or a wife, right? He's like, will you forgive me? Yeah, I'll forgive you. Okay. And then when you get angry again, remember you did that last time? Well, I thought you forgave already. Don't mention it again. Don't mention it again. She'll do it for the sake of Allah. And when you do it for the sake of Allah, you don't open old wounds. Look at how respectful he is. He says, Allah is ever merciful towards me when he took me out of prison and brought you here from the, from the desert. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي After shaitan came between me and my brothers. He didn't even blame his brothers. He said the shaitan caused this, this friction. So I, I, he didn't blame them, he forgave them also. إِنَّ رَبِّي لَطِيفٌ لِمَا يَشَاءُ Surely Allah is ever subtle concerning what he wants. So that's all of these things that are happening. I didn't understand that before. But now everything is clear. So sometimes things happen to you and you might not understand, but in the end you say, Alhamdulillah, you know, I came out of it stronger. And sometimes all of those difficulties that you went through, trust me, when, you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you relief, you will say, well, I didn't even, those, it wasn't even that difficult. <laughs> right? You forget all of that. It's just like the people of Jannah and the people of the hellfire. You know how they are? Let me tell you something. The Prophet ﷺ said, a pers the person who will be most, the most blessed of this world, he's been given so much in terms of it, the wealth of this world, but he's amongst the people of, gen of, of, of the hellfire. On the day of judgment, he will be dipped into the hellfire for just one moment. And he will be asked, did you find any, any, any goodness in this world? Any ease? Any comfort in this world, he would, they would, you know what he would say? By Allah, I didn't find anything. Why? Because, you know, uh, you know sometimes, a husband and wife, and sometimes you have problems, right? Uh, before, um, you know, maybe it was okay, but then all of a sudden, when you have a problem, the husband or the wife will say, you know, you've never been good to me. Never, ever. I was never happy in this, this relationship. Never in this marriage, ever, ever. ever not a single day. Well, you might say, never, ever, not a single day. What about all those days that you walked on the beach, you went on a vacation, and you, mashallah, you bought each other presents, and you forgot all of that. Why? Because of the difficulties, because of the, because of the difficulties that you face now, you forgot all of that. All right? And the opposite is also true. Sometimes you go through so much trials and tribulations and difficulties. And then when it's over, you ask, 
Well, was that, all of that, was that difficult? Oh, alhamdulillah, my gosh, I, we're so happy. <laughs> like, we never had any problems at all. I was just little things, nothing. All of that was nothing, right? Well, it wasn't nothing in those days, right? <laughs> but now that you see the relief that's coming, and also in Jannah, when the person sees Jannah, the person who has the most hardship goes in Jannah, he forgets all of that also. All of those hardships is forgotten. So now they are in a situation where Prophet Yusuf is elevated in that status. And what else is left after all of that? He makes dua to Allah. Rabbi qad ataytani min al mulk wa allamtani min ta'wil al ahadith. O oh my Lord, indeed, of what you have given me of this dominion, the mulk, this, the kingdom, وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِن تَأْوِيلِ الْحَدِيثِ And you, teach, you taught me the interpretation of dreams. فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The originator or creator of the heavens and the earth. أَنْتَ وَلِيِّ فِي الدُّنْيَا You are my protector in this world, وَالْآخِرَةِ And in the hereafter. What's the only thing left? And what's the most important thing now? After you go through all of that, the most important thing, of course, is to die as a Muslim, to die with La ilaha illallah, and that's the true success. Tawafani Muslima. Make me die as a Muslim. And help me to join in the company of the pious. And so. This is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam that we went through really quick. There's so much more benefits. And um, by the way, there's a class on the story of Prophet Yusuf. It's a seminar on it that you get the details, the rulings relating. There's so many things that I left out. Remember I said there's so many things like I want to tell you guys and so many other aspects. But this is just like the, the surface only, the surface only. It's like learning, you know, ABCs in comparison to all the English language, <laughs> okay? And the beauty of the Qur'an is you can read over and over again, it becomes more beautiful and you, you, you get more, more benefit also. There's so much, it's such a miracle. The story of Prophet Yusuf is a miracle in itself. And so, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered here, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also gather us in the highest level in paradise. Amen. And... I know I mentioned one thing. How do you know if you can interpret a dream or not? Right? You want the answer? No, don't worry. I'm not going to tell you. I'll take the seminar. <laughs> I could, but that would be so cruel. <laughs> how do you know? Okay. First, it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how do you know if you can interpret dreams? Well, the thing is, Everyone has dreams. We have relatives who have dreams. And so when you have a dream, just try to interpret. Maybe this is, this is what it means. You say, maybe what it means. I think this is what it means. And then you get it right. Oh, that's, uh, that's what I thought it meant. Next time you have a dream again. Oh, that's what I thought. Oh, then you say, Alhamdulillah. Because you have been given a gift. Not just now. This is a gift. So you start with yourself first. And then you start to realize, but you know what? Allah doesn't give it to people like, oh, I can tell everyone, come, you know, I'll give, give me $500. And like, no. <laughs> people do that, right? Sometimes now I interpret your dream. No. Allah gives to those who are humble, who are pious, who are truthful. The more truthful you are, the more truthful your dreams are. And also, so this is a gift from Allah. The extra gift. You can't, something you can't study. You can't study. You, and if you have a dream, find people who can interpret dreams. And it's never perfect. Nobody's like <laughs> the best of this ummah in interpreting dreams is the Prophet ﷺ. Second was Abu Bakr. And the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Bakr to inter Abu Bakr one time, he said, Let me interpret this dream. Let me, let me try it. Let me try it. A companion came and he had a dream. And Abu Bakr interpreted almost everything correctly except for the last point, except for one point. And if Abu Bakr could also make a mistake, what about us? <laughs> in that? So that's why you don't really know, but it's glad tidings. Glad tidings. And, and when it's near the day of judgment, the believers will have truthful dreams. They have a dream and it will come true. And another, re another sign that a dream is from Allah is also, you have the dream and another person has the same dream. 
You know, another person has the exact same dream. Wow, like, you know, how can that happen? That's another sign that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want your dreams to be truthful to you, then be truthful in speech. The more truthful you are in, truth, truthful you, truthful you are in speech, the more truthful you are going in your dreams also. Your dreams will be truthful. And as your dreams, in other words, will not lie to you. You know, whatever you see. And sometimes you don't need interpretation. Like some brothers will come, oh, I saw myself marrying this sister. You know, what does it mean? Duh. Like, <laughs> hopefully, inshallah, you marry her. <laughs> what else can it mean? <laughs> Is there anything else? So sometimes you don't really need the interpretation. You, know, to, you don't really need interpretation. <laughs> La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. I just want to, uh, you know, sometimes we um, smile and laugh and joke. It's just to keep you guys awake and it's to, you know, to help us also to uh, be more energetic when it comes to learning, more happy when it comes to learning the Qur'an. But it's a serious matter, and then we have to also study and be serious in our studies and be consistent in our studies. So inshallah, go back and read Surah Yusuf again and reflect upon them. We, we skipped a lot of verses and a lot of things, and there are you know, a lot of lectures and so forth online and things like that. So continue to do so, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which benefits and benefit us from that which he has taught us. Wa jazakumullah khairan wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.